welcome to Hudson County TV. The following opinion is solely my own, and it does not reflect that of Hudson County TV, its producers, or sponsors. I'm going to tell you about my top five stories for 2014 and their potential impact for 2015. That is the subject of today's hot topic. Let's start with number five, as Felix Roque revives his political career in West New York. What a turnaround it was for Mayor Felix Roque as his political fortunes changed dramatically. Even though he was acquitted in 2013 of federal charges concerning conspiracy to hack into his political opponent's website, Roque's opponents remained on the offensive and determined to make his life miserable, but he remained focused. With the support of the Hudson County Democrat organization, the mayor became the number one supporter for one of his commissioners, Carida Rodriguez, as she went on to defeat incumbent freeholder Jose Munoz in the Democrat primary in June. As a result, any political capital Jose Munoz had has quickly evaporated. He's become an afterthought, not just in West New York, but Hudson County overall. Commissioner Count Wiley is moving ahead and looking to unseat Mayor Roque in May 2015, but that task could prove to be quite difficult as the HCDO and Felix Roque are now working together, which is very different than it was in May 2011, when he first won. Sure, bidding the county machine is possible, as we saw with Freeholder Romano, but does Wiley have the resources and support he needs to pull off this upset? Time will tell, and the coming months will be quite interesting. Number four, Anthony Romano overcomes the Hudson County Democrat organization and Don Zimmer in Hoboken. Mayor Don Zimmer entered 2014 with considerable momentum, having recently defeated former State Assemblyman Ruben Ramos and Hoboken City Councilman Tim Acapenti in November 2013 without a majority of the votes. If it wasn't for a division in voter turnout, Zimmer would have been one and done. By the end of the year, the bloom fell off that political rose as her allegations against Governor Chris Christie concerning Bridgegate went unsubstantiated and incumbent freeholder Anthony Romano was able to defeat Zimmer's choice of Phil Cohen during the primary. Romano not only had to battle Zimmer, but the entire HEDO apparatus too, as their support was solidly placed in Cohen's corner. Romano had a solid game plan on the ground, and it showed as he overwhelmingly defeated Cohen in the June primary and coasted to re-election in November this year. Sources throughout the county tell me this has created sufficient bad blood because Zimmer did not appreciate looking bad and Romano's popularity is as high as it's ever been. Coming up in 2015, Romano will undoubtedly continue to be visible throughout Hoboken as a possible run for mayor in 2017 isn't completely out of the question. Number three, Carmelo Garcia clashes with Mayor Don Zimmer and it starts to get heated in Hoboken. Staying in the Mile Square City, we also saw 2014 was the year where Mayor Zimmer decided to take on 33rd District Assemblyman Carmelo Garcia and subsequently had him removed as Hoboken's Housing Authority Executive Director. This has generated considerable bad blood between the two, with Garcia and high-powered local attorney Luis Zayas joining forces to take Zimmer to task in court in a highly publicized lawsuit. Sources and legal experts continue to tell me Garcia has a great case and this is nothing more than Zimmer being vindictive. This display of spitefulness could end up costing the city of Hoboken millions of dollars because a settlement is inevitable. Hoboken taxpayers should keep an eye on this because this is what the mayor could end up costing you. Number two, the tragic death of Officer Melvin Santiago in Jersey City. Earlier this summer, we witnessed the untimely death of Jersey City Police Officer Melvin Santiago, who was killed in the line of duty on an early Sunday morning. Reporting to a call concerning a robbery at a Walgreens in an absolutely terrible neighborhood located on Kennedy Boulevard and Communipaw Avenue respectively, he was shot and instantly killed. This sent shockwaves throughout Hudson County's largest city as both residents and members of law enforcement voiced their sorrows through both traditional media and also on social media. Once again, we here at Hudson County TV extend our condolences and continued prayers for the Santiago family as this enthusiastic young officer gave his life while on duty at the hands of a thug's bullet. And at number one, Jimmy Davis does the unthinkable in Bayonne. Seeing Jimmy Davis upset incumbent Mark Smith was one of the biggest political upsets in recent memory. 
the campaign was long and oftentimes very heated as it went into a runoff in June. Mark Smith had to deal with the perception the city was headed in the wrong direction, and Davis capitalized on a strong anti-Smith climate that was quite pervasive, with not only teachers, but other concerned citizens. Consequently, this momentum helped his running mate sweep all five city council seats also. There's no doubt Mayor Davis is going to have a say in the upcoming legislative elections in November 2015 concerning the 31st District. Stay tuned for how his candidates do next November. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, my top five stories and the analysis you will only see here on Hudson County TV. I'm Fernando Uribe, and that's my opinion. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you to all of our viewers for making 2014 the most successful year yet for Hudson County TV. You don't need to go anywhere else online, because everything you need is right here, and that's outstanding journalism and insightful commentary seven days a week, courtesy of your local news leader, Hudson County TV. Please continue to check us out at www.hudsoncountytv.com. Happy New Year, and as always, stay classy, everyone.